What's up guys, it's today we have two purple belts on the show. I'll be passing their guards to teach you how to pass and point out the mistakes they're making, which leads to them getting their guard passed. You're gonna learn a lot about the knee slide especially, so let's get started with James. James is smart to start on his butt rather than his back so he can more easily take grips. So I lift his leg with one hand and push him down by the shoulder with the other to get him on his back where it'll be easier for me to pass. I need one leg between his to pass with the knee slide and now I lift up on his arm to keep him on his back as I slide. I leave a little too much room and James takes a shallow underhook. Now I really need to prioritize keeping him on his back where the underhook won't overly matter. If I let James get on his side with the underhook, he could potentially come up to his knees and wrestle me or take my back. There are a lot of ways to deal with underhooks and in this case I bring my hand to his hip which kills the underhook and blocks his hip so I can keep his body in place as I spin around to the other side. Let me know what positional sparring that you'd like to see next. I hurt my wrist lifting so I have to modify my rolls a little bit but positional sparring isn't as affected so let me know what you'd like to see. This time to put James on his back I use my head to help me and pummel my leg to the inside by pushing his foot to his butt using my knee and circling my leg to put it in between James's legs. What mistake is James making to make it easy for me to take an underhook? It's that he has his left arm on the outside of mine and his elbow separated from his body. He should use his T-Rex arms to keep his elbows close to his body. When I was a blue belt, I would get my guard passed with knee slides constantly by my good friend Miles, who was a purple belt at the time. I looked up everything I could on how to counter the knee slide, then I realized I don't need counters from when it's already deep and instead that his success all came from taking the underhook. From that moment on, I kept my elbows glued to my sides and became disciplined to never give up underhooks. You have to be disciplined to win the early battles as the later battles are much harder to work from. James is on his butt so again I need to put him on his back. I grab the head and foot which gets him mostly down but then I use my head and back to my hand to finish the job. And check this out, I'm sure you can see what mistake James is making and what I'm going to do from here. If you can see the opening in this video, you should be able to see it in live rolling too, both offensively and defensively. You need to keep your elbows tight when you're on the bottom and look for these mistakes when you're on top so that you can capitalize. This time, instead of putting James on his back, I try to pass his sit-up guard using a step-through pass, but I don't secure it very good and James manages to shrimp out to make space and insert his bottom knee as a frame between us, which causes me to bail. This is what it should have looked like. James is going to make the same mistake as before and I think he's going to learn a lot from watching this. I'm going to move on to the next roll but I just want to show you one more pass on James. I have a system where if my opponent resists the knee slide I instead go to the other direction to the side smash and if they resist the side smash then they go to the knee slide. It's a great A B system which you'll see later in the video but here's the side smash. I use my chest to push James's legs to the other side to smash his legs together. Using my arms would be too weak against his legs. Now I just need to backstep to free my leg and transition into side control. Let's get started with Matt. Same thing, I want to put him on his back. I almost headbutted him by accident when using my head to get him down. Luckily I missed though. I want to enter into a better passing position, a position where I'll have multiple passes available to me. So I step back and then over Matt's foot into headquarters. This is headquarters. This is a great passing position. I have X passes from here, leg drags, knee slides, side smashes, and more, all available to me. It's very versatile. To my left, I have the knee slide, and to my right, I have the side smash. In this case, I choose the side smash to my right. Again, using my chest and all my body weight to collapse Matt's leg, finishing with a little back step and shooting my right knee under Matt's leg to prevent him from regarding. Generally, you don't want your opponent's feet on your body because they can use them as frames and prevent your movement and your pass. That's why headquarters is awesome and why I enter into headquarters by stepping over Matt's leg. Look at the mistake Matt makes. We already covered it and it's such a recurring theme and probably why you're getting your guard pass too. You gotta keep those elbows tight because from here, he's already screwed. He lost the early battle and now I'm just choosing the best way to finish the pass. I can grab his tricep or his head with a cross face and I choose the cross face. When you see variations of techniques, it's often not what's right or wrong, but instead it's what's best for the situation. That's something I didn't really understand as a lower belt, learning different moves. When I saw a technique performed two different ways, I wanted to know which way was best. See how I have my elbow on the inside? This is very important to prevent the knee shield. The knee shield is a great counter to the knee slide and probably the number one reason that prevents people from having success with it. I try to go side smash but can't get that going so instead I drop down into a smashed half guard which I think is the absolute best passing position. Once you have the head and or underhook it should be a guaranteed pass if you do everything technical. 
To pass half guard, you need to think of it as a two-step process. First, you need to free your knee, and then you need to free your ankle. To free my knee, I use my forearm to pry it out, and then for the ankle, Matt doesn't really keep the greatest control here, and I easily step over to mount. I'm just going to fast forward this part quick so I can get to how I want to finish off the video, which is with a really nice example of the side smash to knee slide. I enter into headquarters, keeping my elbow tight to prevent the knee shield. I try to go to my right to the side smash, but feel resistance. Matt's adjustment actually helps me into the knee slide. What a great system this is. If you want to see an in-depth overview of the system, let me know and I'll make a video. And as always, I'd like to thank my patrons who support the channel. I super appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. If you enjoy my videos and want to support the channel too, make sure to check out my Patreon. Prices start at just $5 a month and I super appreciate your support. All right, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.